Hey, welcome back. I'm Mr. Hayes. We're talking through the Stats Medic curriculum. We're finishing up Chapter 6 here, and we're going to talk through and formalize the different parts of the geometric distributions conditions. Um, as a reminder, all my notes can be found down below. Throw me a like, subscribe, comment down below if you have any questions. And then again, if you go to statsmedic.com, you can find um, everything Luke and Lindsay have put together on this. Anyway, geometric setting. Um, the four parts of a geometric setting are very similar to the four parts of a um, binomial distribution. The only difference here is that while we do binary and independence and the probability stays the same, the difference is that right over here are trials until success um, is the different part. In um, the bins one for binomials, remember you go, you have a set number, which is like how many can we get out of 10? This one you're going to go until you see a success. In terms of the formulas, you've got a couple of different things. First of all, to figure out what the probability is, the probability of x equaling k. So k is the number of successes. What's going to end, or um, how many trials you go until you see a success, my apologies. So you're going to go the probability of failure raised to the k minus 1 power times p. Okay, and so that's just exactly what we did back in the experience part. Um, and it's relatively, actually it's nice because it's a relatively straightforward and simple thing to do. In terms of describing it, what's going to end up happening in the geometric, bleh, geometric distributions, talk a little bit slow, Mr. Hayes. It's always going to be skewed right for the very reason that I, we talked about in the previous one. Because you're always multiplying through by a failure, which is going to be less than one. So you're taking the previous number and reducing it by a little bit. And so that number is going to start high and it's going to tail off as you go. Um, so the only way that that would go up, obviously, if you're going to say, well, what's the probability it takes at least four tries to go through that? And then you'd add those up. On the center is always going to be, um, and I alluded to this down at the bottom, the mean is going to be one divided by P. And what ends up happening is that that will basically tell you, I mean, kind of like the one out of five, 20% is one out of five. If I go one divided by 20%, which is the number that we used before, that's going to get me to that five. And so it um, sets us up that way. And then for the variability, your standard deviation turns out to be um, one, it's the square root of the failure divided by the square root, or the probability failure divided by the probability of success. And that will give you your standard deviation extremely nicely. Now, what we're going to go through and do is Mason, you know this kid, may not be named, he or she may not be named Mason in your class, but every class has one. Somebody who doesn't have a pencil. And so everybody's all tired of providing him for pencils, and so he figures, or it turns out that only 15% of the kids give Mason a pencil whenever they ask for it. So today is test day, and he needs a pencil, so what? We're going to go through and explore all of that options, okay? So go ahead and hit pause, run through the questions, and we'll see you in a minute. All right, so the first question that comes up is, describe the probability distribution. Um, be sure to check the appropriate conditions. So since it says until find, he finds someone who gives him a pencil, this is going to go underneath the geometric. So notice here, um, we still have success or failure. He gets a pencil, he doesn't get a pencil. All the trials are independent. Um, and we're kind of assuming that, but we're just going to assume each kid is going to decide whether or not he's going to do it. Not Under, under no influences. Um, T, Mason asks until he gets a pencil, and then the probability is going to be 15%. So it is a geometric distribution. What's the probability that the third person asked is the first person who gives him a pencil? So again, probability, and I did A for asking um, the number of asks. So here you've got the failures raised to the second power times 0.15. So it's about a 10.84% chance. The probability that Mason gets a pencil by the third person, so you have to figure out the probability that he has to ask one, one person and two persons and three persons. And so you add all those up and you get 0.359. Much like you'll see a binomial distribution and a normal distribution options under your calculator, you will see also geometric CDF and PDF. Um, honestly, if it's a PDF, I just find it's easier to go through this than typing everything in. But for CDF, I definitely use it. Um, and so again, there's only two options, there's only two conditions that you have to type in what the probability is and then what is your x value, how many different, um, how many trials are you looking for. So you get the same thing. So the mean here is that he's going to, on average, have to ask six, just over, just under seven people in order to get a pencil. Okay, and again, we get that because the mean is going to be one divided by your probability of success, one divided by 0.15 gives you 6.67. And then should Matt Mason be surprised if he doesn't receive a pencil until he asks at least 10 people? 
So again, since it says at least 10 people, that means it has to be greater than or equal to 10 people. Um, and so that's what we're going to go through and find. So the probability of that, you can either go through and find all the individual probabilities of 1 through 9. Yay. <laughs> I wouldn't do that, to be honest, but you could. Um, and you're going to end up getting 0.236. So it takes about 23%. Now you could also go through here and again do the 1 minus since um, the probability that asking is bigger than 10 would be 1 minus the probability that asking is 9 or less. So there's the setup for that. And so, no, it's not really all that unlikely that Mason will have to ask, at least in my case, about half the class to get a pencil. Um, and then finding the standard deviation for it, um, you're going to go through and just, again, take the probability of failure and take the square root of that so, and then divide it through by 0.15. And so the pr standard deviation is going to be 6.4. And now, since they didn't ask you to interpret it, we're not writing it all out. Plus, you guys know how to do that. So right now, I think that's good. And that's chapter six. We're talking about random variables. We have talked about them in all shapes and sorts sizes. How can we treat them as normal? How can we treat them as um, binomial? How can we tre now treat them in geometric situations? And so hopefully, you are all ready to start reviewing for your test. So I will see you on the other side. I hope to get a whole bunch of stuff for chapter seven done over break. And hopefully, we'll see you back then. Talk to you later.